This is really going to help a lot of people. This is really going to give you a better understanding what degeneration is, what, the, what arthritis is, what uh, spinal stenosis, all these types of degenerative processes stem from instability one way or another. So let's go into the different aspects and the different reasons how and why we're getting these particular problems. So let's move on. I think that you'll enjoy this program and uh, we'll move on right here. This just shows us a little bit that instability will cause neck pain. Uh, many symptoms, not just only neck pain, but we're talking about radiation of the neck, possibly in, the, in between the shoulder blades, into the shoulder, uh, down into the arm, into the hand and fingers. You can get tingling numbness. You can get discomfort into the chest. Uh, when this instability continues, the nerves become inflamed and irritated, and those joints become more arthritic, obviously, which we're going to talk about, but uh, even under the skull. Uh, so these nerves can play lots of funny games, uh, not only under the skull, but even into the jaw and facial area, which we'll see in just a couple of minutes. So as we move up here, you're going to ask me, how does this occur? So our next part of our lesson here is teaching you why potentially are you getting these type of uh, inflammatory problems, constant neck problems. Well, let's look at this. We've, we've talked about this in many of my videos about our head, uh, our head being uh, 12 pounds. And for every inch it goes forward, it's an additional 10 pounds. You could just show you that when people are texting, looking down, the amount of degrees that they are looking down is proportional to the amount of weight that you see on the force of the neck. The more looking down you do, the more force is on the neck, the more instability uh, the neck is going to have. The other potential thing is looking here, the correct way versus the incorrect way. I always recommend people to jut the chin down or bring that particular thing that you're looking at uh, via maybe your, your, your phone, maybe your iPad or whatever it is, bring it up to your, uh, up to your face. You can look at that. Okay. Let's go on to right here. That's another particular situation with forward head posture. Uh, remember that head weighs 12 pounds. I'm going to show you something really interesting. This just shows you a way of stabilizing your neck. You don't have to use this weight. This is just an idea. We're not going to spend a lot of time on this. Uh, but look here. Uh, basically, you are carrying around a bowling ball. How many people out there went bowling one time or, or another? I have. And those bowling balls can get quite heavy. But let's look right here. If you're sitting and you got a bowling ball right there sitting on your head, I don't know about you, but I know that I can't take that bowling ball and hold it out in front of me like this for more than a couple seconds. Now imagine your head with that bowling ball weight is going forward like this. Can you imagine the damage it's doing? It's stretching ligaments. Stretching ligaments causes instability. So the difference between hypermobility and instability is hypermobility means that uh, you have stretching ligaments, but you don't have symptoms. Instability means you're going to usually have symptoms, which we'll touch on in a little bit. So this is the bowling ball here. Again, this is showing just a uh, how it moves forward, the amount of weight going forward, looking at your iPad or your book versus uh, standing or sitting up correctly with those ears over the shoulder. Extremely important. When we look at these bowling balls, it kind of gives us a better idea uh, that next time we do this, we're going to kind of think of something that, that we better stop. Uh, this we talked about many times. This shows you the studies here. This is a uh, Kapanji Physiology of Joints Volume 3 showing us the normal posture, 12 pounds for every inch, which is two inches here. It's 20 pounds extra for every inch is 10 pounds, but that's 32 pounds for two inches, 42 pounds for three inches. And this is our major epidemic that we are seeing right now. Now, the other way that we can experience uh, instability is through the old whiplash. Uh, this happens hundreds of thousands and thousands of people uh, throughout the world. I will say millions of people. Uh, it may not only be from a car accident, it could be just from, from jarring, it could be from a sport, which we'll show you in just a, a minute. But what about this slip and fall? Uh, this happens all the time. People fall, fall into the shoulder, uh, a, a significant whipping of the head, a jolting of the head, stretching the ligaments in the joints. And many people just kind of get up and they may be bashful or shy and they don't want to make anything out of it and they start having significant problems. Here's a little soccer injury. Uh, this is a serious injury. 
Uh, this is landing on the neck with the great force of the body, causing stretching of those ligaments. Uh, just imagine, you know, we're looking at a spine here. Uh, realize that around the spine we have ligaments holding it together. We have muscles over those ligaments. Obviously, when the muscle contracts, it allows the spine to turn or move or flex. But uh, this is very fragile here. And remember, you have the nerves that come out between the vertebrae and the discs sit between the bodies of the vertebrae. So when they're stretching like this, look how these spinous processes are fanning apart. Well, that's ligaments on the back of that, and it's stretching. And when those ligaments are stretched, it's kind of like me explaining, you know, take a rubber band and overstretch that rubber band. It doesn't come right back. The purpose of ligaments is to hold bone to bone, to hold it tight. So if those ligaments are loose, what happens to the joints? They become more lax. They become unstable. When they become unstable, we start inflaming nerves and causing pain. Uh, and here is another very important thing, the old neck cracker. Not nutcracker, but neck cracker. You must not crack your neck. If you are doing that, you can just see the force, the dynamic force of what you're doing to the spine, uh, stretching those ligaments. And even though you say, wow, that pop felt good, that noise felt good. And by the way, the noise is just nitrogen and carbon dioxide being released from the joint space. Uh, but you're going to say, wow, that felt good. But what you're doing is you're stretching ligaments. I can't tell you how many people, how many emails I get, hundreds and hundreds talking about, ah, I wish I never would have cracked my neck. They're developing all kinds of problems from headaches to radiating pain chronically for a long time. Please look at my videos on neck cracking. I have a lot of it out there and it really talks about some good stuff in there. So check that out. Let's go on to a little bit of nuts and bolts. Here's an A to P open mouth, looking at the mouth open up like this. Ah, uh, and we look at the first vertebrae just called the, the atlas up top called the lateral mass C1 to the left. If you see that, you see C2, the axis, uh, and you look at the odontoid process. That's a very important area uh, because of the atlas and axis up top. Uh, that's where 50% of our movement comes initially. Then the rest of the 50% comes below when we flexion, flexion and extension. But the majority of our rotation comes from up top. Okay, a lot of that rotation. That's where a lot of problems, a lot of instability occurs commonly in rheumatoid arthritis as well as down in the lower mid cervical region, but we do see quite a bit with rheumatoid. Uh, let's talk about the atlas bone here. You can look at, just to give you a little anatomy, not to spend much time, you can come back to this. We're looking at the first vertebrae uh, on top called the atlas. It looks like a ring. See that ring up there? It says C1. That's the atlas. And right below is C2 called the axis. And that dens that comes up like the thumb. Well, that's kind of like the atlas that goes around the axis. This is really important information. You have the alar ligament that uh, keeps things intact. But when that area is stretched, maybe fall on your head, crack in your neck, automobile actions, whiplash, uh, or just chronic poor posture, those ligaments start to stretch. Remember, that weight of the head being 12 pounds now becomes 22 pounds, 32 pounds, 42 pounds, 60 pounds. And that over time stretches ligaments. Okay, I really hope you digest that. It's very, very important. Uh, here is the atlas here again. Uh, just talking about instability, what happens up there. This is a different view. You can come back to that. This is rotary instability. Quite commonly, we see this. You can come back and read that a little later. Uh, here's the old x-ray of that same area. Uh, that is instability called the ADI space, the lantodental interval space. That is wider than it should be. It should not be more than, I believe, three millimeters. Um, so there are things we can pick up. If you come a little lower in the mid-neck, uh, you see that ugly those, those vertebrae, count down one, two, three, and four. You see those vertebrae, that arthritis right there. I can't show you. And you can see the kissing spinous processes in the back. If you count down from the back of the vertebrae, number three and number four. I can't show you on the pointer here, but I'll show you another picture right here. Uh, <clears throat> this picture here shows us a flexion and extension of the neck area. Uh, if you look all the way to the left, everything, if you look at the back of the vertebral bodies, which are the square bodies, and in the black and the black between those vertebral bodies are the discs, but it, it's even when it goes forward. But if you look to the right uh, and it says 4.34 millimeters, well, between C6 and C7, when, when the neck was extending backwards, that area shifted 4.34 uh, millimeters, and I believe over 3.5 is abnormal. Uh, so that is instability. So there are things that we can see with instability, but the problem with instability is that 
a lot of the problems are static. For example, if we ask a patient to bring their head back or forward to the side, sometimes the muscle spasms won't allow them to fully bring it back because of the lack of mobility. So it's very, very hard to pick up uh, instability in the neck in many, many cases. That's why you have to have a pretty thorough diagnosis and a good clinician, a good doctor to really examine that. Uh, so uh, down in the middle of the neck there, that is degeneration there. Uh, down one, two, three, four, five, six. That's degeneration. Now, by the way, when we get degeneration in the neck, you see how it looks different in the lower neck than the, the vertebrae above, how the disc spaces are thinner. Uh, when we get degeneration, that happens quite often when there's instability. So a lot of arthritis, osteoarthritic changes, spondylosis, all degenerative changes, uh, facet degenerations, uh, facet imbrication, spurs, uh, even fusions, osteophytes, uh, syndesmophytes, these are all calcification that takes place in the spine. It stems from instability. When something's unstable, things degenerate. It's like if your knee's unstable, the joint degenerates. The hip's unstable, the, the hips degenerates. The, the shoulder's unstable, the, the shoulder degenerates. It does stem from instability. Uh, so if we look up here, this just allows you to understand that these nerves, when they become, un when these, these joints, when they become unstable, affect other areas. This causes TMJ, problems in the jaw. The studies are out there. And what do we do? When we have TMJ, we only look at the jaw. Well, potentially it may be coming back here. I want to throw that out just for a source of knowledge. Here's an x-ray here uh, showing you a normal neck, compressed neck. Uh, we can see forward head posture causing all that degeneration. All those discs are really thinned out. That is instability. When those discs get thin, the vertebrae uh, become closer together, affecting on those nerves. Here's another area here, the importance of normal structural uh, integrity of the neck area, that when you have forward head posture, uh, it throws the integrity off. It affects the nerves. It affects the neurological system. Uh, we then can get tinnitus, vertigo, headaches, lightheadedness, giddiness, this is where it comes from. Many of these cases come from degenerative problems and instability of the neck by the millions, more than you could imagine. So, and that's why people are on drugs and not getting well because they're not getting to the root of the source of their problem. Degeneration. Here is normal discs above and degenerative discs below. Look at the difference. Okay, but degeneration comes from instability. It's so important. Instability is a leading cause of degeneration. So now the next question that arises, what do I do? I've got degeneration. I've got instability. I've got pain. I've got issues. Well, anytime there is instability, usually there is ligamentous laxity, and we generally do not want to excessively put it through an excessive amount of range of motion. So we like isometric exercises. Now, uh, here, I like using ice, <coughs> excuse me, if it's inflamed. Um, I like using heat if it's chronic. The difference between ice and heat is anytime you have inflammation, even acute or even semi-acute or even later on acute, because you have a chronic problem does not mean that maybe one day you're spending a lot of time looking down. Maybe you're lifting. Maybe you had a, an accident or an injury and you inflamed it again. You had to go back to ice. Whenever in doubt, use ice. Ice is really important. Ice takes away inflammation. Heat brings in circulation. So you can read this later. That's good to know. Another question that quite commonly comes up is, what about a collar? You know, my neck feels unstable. Well, if you were just in a significant accident or an injury, I would say yes. I would tell you to stabilize. I would definitely tell you to stabilize the first several days. But that's it. You know, it's like people with lower back and sciatic, they've done the studies. They said people used to stabilize the lower back and lay in bed all the time. They thought those people would heal quicker. They don't. They heal slower. Because what happens is the muscles atrophy. If you don't use it, you lose it. So that neck, those neck muscles, with that collar, those muscles start to get weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker. Obviously, you need muscles that are strong to hold the head up. So the first couple of days and toss it and get rid of it. If you don't have surgery, if you don't have anything significant, nothing torn, nothing broken, get rid of it. No good. No good. Okay, so these are the basic, the, the isometric exercises pretty much what we're doing is we're just taking the head, pushing force against it about five seconds and relaxing, doing about 12 repetitions, doing in all different ranges of motion. Those are important. The other thing is, I love this, and I, this is one of the trap stretches we've done on our videos, uh, just bending the knees slightly, crossing the arms and holding above the knees. And kind of when you stand up, 
you feel all these muscles under here on the traps just stretch try that sometime hold out hold that and kind of stand up as you're holding that you'll feel all these muscles start to open up and stretch it's very safe you're not putting the, the neck through any mobility this right here i love it the quadruped arm leg raise we kind of call this like the halfway superman excellent for core excellent for the neck excellent for the muscles around that stabilize the neck realize that even though this is not directly hitting the neck indirectly it's helping the neck very important People, you need to understand that when you have an injury up here, you need to look at what is stabilizing that particular area down here. Whatever goes wrong down here is going to affect the neck as well. Just like when your feet are pronated, okay, or you're flat-footed, or you have this plantar fasciitis and, you, and the arch is dropped, that's going to bow the legs and affect internally rotate the hip, affect the imbalance all the way up the spine, and affect the neck. So these exercises are real good, believe it or not, for neck conditions. Here's another thing that we talked about just in a recent uh, uh, video we did, but you put something up against or a pillow and you can resist against going backwards. You can go, uh, you can actually, let me skip that. See if I can come to this. Oh, let me do it. Where did it go? Here's the other one going laterally. You can do it going forward. The resistive exercise is good. They're called isometric. Isometric exercise means your strength in the muscle with no move with no movement generally the first four to six weeks we like to do that with significant inflammation significant instability but if it's chronic then generally you can usually put it through range of motion if it's chronic but if it's newly inflamed if it's unstable if it's related to an injury you do not want to put it through excessive mobility now chin tucks are one of my favorite not only for forward head posture for for instability for degeneration for osteoarthritis for spondylosis uh, for any type of neck problem, unfortunately, the weakest muscles of our neck are the anterior neck flexors. And those are the muscles that stabilize the head that keep your head from going forward. So when these muscles are weak, then I know that you have forward head posture. And I, I can tell you that if you have forward head posture, you have weak anterior neck flexors. You need to make sure you're doing that. You can do that lying down on your back, just just the chin, and you can put pressure against the bed. You can go upside down. You can go on your belly and jut the chin and come up against gravity going upwards. There are different ways you can be creative, but that is one of the best things for your neck, I can promise you. Uh, here are the plank. The plank is an excellent thing, although I realize that many people can't do this for whatever reason, although I will take you to the last important thing called the transverse abdominis. Now, these are our muscles of our core, our external abdominal obliques, our rectus abdominis, internal abdominal oblique, and our transverse abdominis, although the transverse abdominis is the most important muscle for core. That is a deep, deep, deep abdominal muscle. I want you to take your fingers or your hand and put it on your belly. Come on, everyone, right now, when you're sitting up, I want you to push in your belly and cough like this. <coughs> Guess what? Those muscles deep in there is your transverse abdominis. That's how important it is. Now, those muscles stabilize the lower back. Now, in order to work this muscle, I have a, do have a, I have a video on this. Uh, it's called the no sit up exercise, but I'll show you how it works. Very simple. You're sitting up. Take your take your take one of your hands or both your hands. You can do it like this. Put it on your belly button. Do it right now. And I want you to go ahead and squeeze your belly button back into your spine. Squeeze your stomach in as far as you can, just like this. I'm going to squeeze in and hold it for five seconds. Now you feel that, huh? Relax it, okay? Squeeze your belly in against your spine all the way back and hold it for five seconds again. Go ahead, squeeze it. Come on, squeeze in, squeeze in. It hurts. That's just two of them. Try doing a dozen of them. Try doing two sets of those. I want you to start doing that exercise. That will strengthen your, your transverse abdominis. That will strengthen your lower back, strengthen your core, and help your neck. Because what it's going to do, when you sit up, it's going to keep you upwards and keep you stable and keep you strong. Because when your transverse abdominis is weak, this is what happens. Okay? We collapse. Our shoulders go forward. Our head goes forward. And we start developing more instability. This is kind of an interesting video, and I kind of liked it myself because it really touches on some important highlights. Uh, I really hope that you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please share it on your social media. 
I ask you if this is your first time uh, seeing my videos, I ask you to check my channel out, Motivational Doc. Check me out on Facebook, Motivational Doc there. Uh, I would appreciate if you'd like to leave me any comments or any reviews on Facebook. I always like to see those. I really would like to get a thumbs up here and there if you don't mind. Um, and I ask you to subscribe if you have not because you will continue to get cutting edge information on the self-help, probably the most thorough neck therapy, self-help therapy you'll get. That's free. Uh, and hopefully it will save you lots of money in the future. We don't have to run the doctors where you could be helping yourself. That's what this channel is all about. And hopefully you'll share it. Uh, much love to everyone out there with good health and we'll catch up with you real soon. Bye-bye now.